Welcome back to One Million Nothings, where I'm saying it's possible to make a million dollars on YouTube with a channel about nothing. In this video, I'm going to answer this very popular question, and that is, what is the best way to start getting views on a YouTube channel as a beginner? Like, say you just created a YouTube channel, what is the best way? Now, I hate YouTubers that ramble on and waste their time. I hate having fluff in my videos. So I'm going to give you a short answer and then a long answer. Short answer, one word search ability. Now this video itself actually stems from a comment from Rap Tonic. I love that uh, name by the way. And they said, I'm discovering from this video that people seem to flock towards education and information based content. Interesting. Now that comment was on a video that I did about how much does YouTube pay me or how much did YouTube pay me for 1000 views. And in case you're curious to sum up that video in one second, $8.40. Although I will say, as a quick side note, in case you didn't know, it does fluctuate. A thousand views on YouTube are not created equal. I'd say the average YouTuber makes between three and five dollars for every one thousand views. Just want to say that as a side note, but sometimes that can be a lot higher, having a high, what's called RPM, or lower. That being said, though, jumping back into the point of this video, and I do want to say as a side note, I'm in the airport right now, as you can probably tell based off the different background compared to my typical videos. This is a very big thing, because as you can imagine, if you're starting a YouTube channel, you want to know how to get traffic. And again, I'm not going to give you any fluff, I'm going to get right to the point. Searchability, that's the number one thing you really want to think about. Now, to break that down more, here's kind of the, <clears throat> the secret sauce, in my opinion, to really get started, and that is, how can you make videos about topics, about things, that people are already searching for? <clears throat> Excuse me. I just ate this like buffalo chicken sandwich, which was 15 bucks here, by the way, and wasn't good. It just like caught my throat a little bit, but how can you make videos about things people are already searching for? This is a big thing to think about. So this is why videos like how-tos, tutorials, reviews, these kind of videos do really well. So for example, take the, arguably, the most searched thing maybe ever when it comes to how-tos, how to tie a tie. Well, if you think about it, and this is really important to understand, if you do a video about how to tie a tie, Someone can Google it, search it on YouTube. And in case you didn't know, YouTube is the second biggest search engine. Second just to Google. It's bigger than Yahoo. It's bigger than Bing and everything. And if you're gonna search how to tie a tie, a lot of people are probably gonna go to YouTube instead of Google, because it's a very visual thing, right? Just to use an example. So if you think about it, one, people are gonna be searching that anyway. Regardless of your video or not, people are gonna be YouTubing or searching how to tie a tie. Secondly, someone could click on your video and watch it, even if they don't know you or care about you. And three, when someone has a search query, as I'm gonna call it, how to to do this, reviewing this, et cetera, et cetera, they usually have an objective in mind. They're watching a video to solve their need or problem, whatever it is, right? And this is where your video can come in. And this is huge. So if let's like, say you do a video about how to tie a tie, how to set up a microphone with your computer, how to, um, do X, Y, or Z, how to do a push-up, regardless of your niche, doing how-tos are very valuable. And I might even wear that with tutorials, right? With a tutorial like how to do this, push-up tutorial, pull-up tutorial, um, hand sand push-up tutorial. These are videos that people will actually search for because they're already searching for them. They're already Googling them. They're already YouTubing these exact keywords. And in addition, they're willing to watch your video because, and I don't mean this in a bad way, they don't have to know about you or care about you to want to watch the video. Now this comes down to, and this is not always true, but I find if I had to group it into two broad categories, I found when it comes to YouTube, people usually are in one or two categories. They want to be educated or they want to be entertained. And based off that comment, and on that comment, like I said from Raptonic, they said, huh, informational and educational based content seems to be doing well on this channel. And there's a reason why, because if you think about it, if you're gonna be entertained by a video, well, usually you might be like doom scrolling through YouTube, you might watch random videos, you might watch it for a little bit or a long time, but from a certain perspective, and I might even word it like this, you don't have to. It's not necessary to watch these videos. Now, of course, there are some videos that are a good combination. Like I think Kirk Scott is one of my favorite YouTube channels where it's very educational about science-based topics, but it's also very entertaining. It's a blend of both. But for a lot of people, when, they come to, when it comes to being educated, they're not just doing it for entertainment, they're not watching it for fun, they're not just casually you know, having it on in the background or whatever. What they're doing is they're specifically going to YouTube, 
searching for something and they want their problem, their need to be addressed. And this is where your video can come in. So one, like I said, how to's, tutorials, these kind of videos do very well on YouTube. Second, reviews. If you think about it like microphone review, a protein powder review, a gardening tool review, a review of a restaurant, a review of a whatever the case is, these are things that people are already searching for. Like, let's say you want to buy, hopefully not, but this buffalo chicken wrap at this airport. <laughs> I mean, you might or might not. You might Google it or YouTube. Um, buffalo chicken wrap review from City Point Market. No offense, City Point Market, but pretty bad. I mean, then again, it's kind of like a gas station sandwich but anyway like so you want to review like again like so you want to look up a protein powder like i just said like say so you want to buy a new pair of shoes a new microphone a new camera you want to buy pretty much anything a lot of people typically do go to youtube and watch the videos because if you think about it they want to get their problem solved their problem is should i buy this or not that's kind of their main mindset and the way they solve that problem or need or whatever is by watching your potential video. So I ask you, and this is what I say to a lot of people when you're starting out on YouTube is whatever your niche is, whatever your goal is on YouTube, ask yourself, what are things that people are already searching for? One, but then two, how can you make videos based off of what people are searching for that they're willing to watch your video even if they don't know you? Now, hopefully at some point and hopefully inevitably, People will start watching your videos just because they love you, right? I have five different YouTube channels, in case you didn't know, each one about a different niche. And I know if I post a video about anything, people will watch it because they watch my videos maybe more for entertainment. Or they're like, hey, I like Mark. Whatever he posts, I'm gonna watch. Like I like the random stuff Mark posts on his different YouTube channels. And like I said, I have five different ones. But in the beginning, in order to really get started, I think the best and most important, important thing you can do and I mean this in a good way, I really do mean this in a good way, is to ask yourself, okay, I'm gonna make this video with the mindset that no one knows about me, no one cares about me, and no one's watching my video just for me. They're watching for the content. This is why you may notice on this channel, I post a lot of videos that don't have any fluff, I get right to the point, make it very educational. I mean, hey, for this video, you don't have to know about me, you don't have to care about me. This may be your first time watching one of my videos, but you can still gain information out of it. It can solve the need that you have, which is starting a YouTube channel and growing a YouTube channel, especially in the beginning. And you can take the information from this video without knowing me to then grow your own YouTube channel. Now, one thing I have talked about here and there throughout this video is having a niche, right? This is kind of YouTube being one on one. Having a niche is important, although not necessary. I will talk about that in a future video. Niches are, I think not the right intention. I understand the intention of having a niche, but it's not the full truth. That's a subject for a different video. But a big thing is, if I'm looking at different niches, if like you're doing a video editing, video editing channel, okay, that makes sense. How to do this, tutorials, reviewing stuff. But if you have a vlog channel, if like you wanna do something like Logan Paul or PewDiePie, if you like say have a gaming channel, how do you take advantage of that? And that is making sure that your videos, now getting to the nitty gritty of like say that type of content of what I might even say, entertainment-based content, to still have targeted keywords. So for example, let's say you're traveling and you're in Los Angeles, and let's say you're bouncing around Los Angeles and you're doing a video and you're like, shoot, well, no one's Googling how to live in LA. Oh, okay, maybe they might be, but it's not a how-to. You're not really doing a tutorial. You're not necessarily doing a review. What's the best approach? And the best approach is to use keywords in the title that people might stumble upon or and might pop up if they're Googling something. So for example, let's say someone wants to move to LA, potentially, they're considering it. They might go on Google saying, what is it like to live in LA? What's it like to travel around LA? What is the LA traffic like? How much money does it cost to live in LA? You know, those kind of search queries. Or you could do a video, like you visit LA, and you say, what is it like uh, to visit LA for the first time? You could do it as a question. Or you could do it even as a statement saying, visiting LA for my first time, or visiting Los Angeles for my first time, I did not expect this, or something like that, right? One, decent title, right? I'm visiting Los Angeles for the first time. Here's what I experienced, for example. But then secondly, and this is a big thing, people might actually Google, what is it like to visit LA for the first time, et cetera, et cetera, and your video could pop up. Even though you're not necessarily trying to solve a specific need in that video, you're still answering this, the, the question, the query, or I might even say the problem that person has. They want to know what it's like to live in LA and through your video, even if it might be more entertaining in a vlog style format, 
your video can still solve that problem, right? And that's one thing I say to a lot of people is that I think when it comes to YouTube, a lot of people do go on YouTube just to be entertained. You know, I've said this before that it's a very entertaining platform. You have all these different creators making super high quality, entertaining videos, whether it's something very eye-opening or catchy or funny or mystifying, whatever the case is. But for a lot of people going to YouTube, they want to be educated. They want to be informed, like that comment said from Raptonic, and they hit the nail on the head that on this channel, which is, like I said, a channel about nothing, trying to work away to a million dollars, the videos on this channel that do the best are usually my educational videos. Like I did one video, one of my first ones actually, was, hey guys, I'm going to the gym, can you watch my protein powder for me? Now, am I so solving a need? Is that video educational? No. <laughs> it's not really educational. And some people did watch it. Some people did find it because they actually did Google, and I saw this in the analytics. They did Google uh, protein powder and that video popped up, but they clicked out right away and I could see that. Because as you can imagine, they're like, wait, am I gonna sit here and watch this guy's protein powder on video for an hour and a half while he's at the gym? That video is more entertaining, right? But for a video like this, or my other videos on this channel talking about YouTube analytics, the income of being a YouTuber, how much does YouTube pay, um, how much should I get paid for X amount of views or having X amount of subscribers, these are the kind of videos that people not only watch, but click on and stay watching because it's solving their need. Anything educational and informational really does well on YouTube. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that people can discover your content. It could be through YouTube search, which is why I said searchability in the beginning of this video. It could be browsing content. It could be a suggested video. It could be a direct link. Like let's say someone posts a video on Facebook saying, hey, this is a cool video for my friend, and they click it, that could be a direct link. There's a million different ways someone can discover a video. But I think one of the best and easiest for beginning YouTubers is to do content, like I said a bunch of times throughout this video, I'm really trying to drive this point home, is to make content about things people are searching for anyway. Because not only is the traffic already there, you don't have to generate the traffic, the traffic's already there, but in addition, they're gonna watch your video and watch you even if they don't know you. They don't have to, because you're watching it for the information. And of course, make sure videos are high quality, good thumbnails, good titles, this goes without saying, but this is a good way to start getting traffic. And I think one of the best ways to do this too, one huge pro tip I'll leave you with, is this. Take out a piece of paper, or maybe the notes app on your phone, whatever you like best, and for your given niche, write down the top, maybe 20 questions a beginner might have. I think this is a really good place to start. Now, you don't have to do questions, like I said, you could do microphone review, but I think questions usually are the kind of things that revolve around this idea of how to use in tutorials. So let's say if I'm starting a fitness channel and I'm big into fitness, I might say, um, you know, what is the best protein powder for beginners? What is the best way to do a push up? What is the best way to do a pull up? Um, how long should I work out for when I'm first starting out? Um, what is the best way to balance weights and cardio? Um, I don't know, what are the best, what should I wear when going to the gym for the first time? Um, I'm trying to think like other sorts, um, how much water should I drink? What should I have before my workout? What should I have after my workout? Like one video that I did before, which got way more views than I ever expected was, what is the difference between pre-workout and post-workout? Now for all my fitness people out there, they're probably like, what do you mean? It's pretty self-explanatory. Pre-workout is before the workout, post-workout is after. But for a lot of beginners, they're like, okay, yeah, I know that, but what, what does pre-workout actually do? What's the point of pre-workout? What is the point of post-workout? What do they, what does post-workout actually do, right? Those kind of videos do really, really well because even though it seems so simple, these are the kind of things that beginners do search for. And in case you didn't know, when it comes to just internet marketing and content creation, 90% of your views I find when it comes to educational and informational content is coming from the masses, and the masses are usually in the beginner to intermediate stages. So let's say if you do a very advanced video about a very specific topic, it will probably get views, but maybe not as much as like say a beginning video. Like let's say I'm doing a video about how to do a handstand push-up, and I do handstand push-ups a lot in my training. Well, if I do a video about some crazy technical version of a handstand push-up, like a planche push-up, which is, isn't really a, plan, a handstand push-up, but it's like a variation of a calisthenics push-up. If I do a video about a planche push-up, I know it probably won't do as well if I do a video about how to get your first handstand push-up or the five-step progression or five-step process to getting your first handstand push-up. That video I know is gonna do a lot better because I'm targeting the beginners. And that's, again, just one strategy. There are many strategies to this whole thing of searchability that I can talk about, that's just one. Take out a piece of paper to get started to give you some 
I don't say homework, but you got what I'm saying. I think a good like action plan because I don't like making videos just about the education and the technical technical parts of YouTube, but also giving you some practical, real world advice of how to get started. Take out a piece of paper for your niche and write down the top 20 questions. So if I'm doing a gardening channel, I might say, what are the best beginning tools for a gardener? What type of soil should I use when starting out with a garden? Do I have to prep my soil before filming something? Um, do I, is there a difference between um, planting some, planting a plant that grows underground or above ground, right? These are all these different questions that like are very important for beginners. And these are also all these different questions that people really wanna know the answer to. They're already searching for them. People are already searching these questions. They're already searching these queries. They're already searching for the type of content for their need to be solved. And that's where your video can come in.